West Australia this year has been the stadium. Uh, we've got the new stadium. Um, now, now we've forgotten all about Subiaco um, so quickly. It's just disappeared into uh, distant memory. Um, what do we all think about the new stadium? I'll start with Roger, because he and I have had discussions about it. Uh, now looking back, we can compare it to Subi, but what do we really think? Is it, is, it, is it better? Is it the same? Is it not as good? What do you think? Mate, I'm one of those old, old fashioned guys, I hate change. I <laughs> <laughs> change the rain every day. I'm just, I'm just one of those guys, I grew up at Subiaco Oval, I you know, sort of lived and breathed a lot more footy and it was very hard to change. I still, still I like to go to Subi and feel like you know, that I was part of it. And I think that, that holds a lot of football in Australia. They play so much at Subiaco, I play the premierships, finals, everything. And go, but I don't be up to stadium, I, I don't feel that comfort that I used to feel at Subiaco. You used to take a full quarter to get a beer at Subiaco. And two hours to get out of it. Johnny, you know I don't drink. <laughs> so I can't come there to come on that. <laughs> but no, seriously, I, I, love, I love the stadium. I think it's the greatest facility around. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm proud of WA man. I, I really love the stadium. The only thing I don't like, Johnny, you know, everyone here is, like I live in Frio now, just catching the train, taking me into the city, catching another train. So just getting there is a hassle for me. But, what? The box, right there. My uncle was sick back then. But <laughs> <laughs> like, like anyway, I, uh, I, I love it once I'm there, but it's just a hassle for me going, coming and to and forth on it. But you know, I'll, I'll look at that, but this the stage is brilliant. Alright, so let's let's cut to the chase. Uh, before we get on the finals and with GF this year, let's have a quick analysis. What does everyone think about the Eagles? season and the Dockers season. And I think the only way you can look at it is to go back to the two grand finals, 13 and 15. Okay, so the Dockers win the 2013 GF against Hawthorne, uh, performed well, could have won it, easily could have won it, um, didn't. Um, and then, you know, they were three points down in the third quarter, um, outscored uh, scoring shots at least, and I think it scored all four in the final quarter and lost the game. The Eagles were blown away two years later and humiliated by Hawthorne, as were Sydney the year before. Um, and they were um, decimated by Hawthorne. So, you know, in any analysis in 2014, uh, Fremantle seemed to be more advanced than the West Coast, albeit uh, with some aging players. Now we fast forward to 2018 and look at it now and we see that Fremantle, uh, well that's what we're going to discuss. Where are they at with their progress? Where are they at in terms of uh, comparisons with Fremantle with uh, West Coast? And on the recruiting side, uh, two analysis, so two analysis we have to, analyses we have to carry out. One is where does each side compare to the other? And secondly, off field, how's each club done recruiting? John Townsend. Well, clearly West Coast are ahead of Freo at the moment. Their ladder position tells a pretty clear tale about how that's going. But I, I, I cover Waffle Footy. I see a lot of West Coast, uh, a lot of East Perth and Peel. Obviously, the reserve sides in the, in the Waffle, the two AFL clubs, and there's not a lot of depth at East Perth. I think so. That's a concern for for West Coast. But that perhaps at the moment their best side is pretty good and. They didn't finish second on the ladder by accident, and you suspect they should win at home against Melbourne or, Freo, uh, Melbourne or uh, Hawthorne, whoever goes through tonight. So they should be in the grand final in a couple of weeks' time. Freo are further behind. Their, their development, maybe they, their, their depth is a little different because they, they're younger. They're, they're second, the second half of their list is a bit younger, and there's players here like Stranatica and Cox and Ryan and Sean Darcy, who are on the way up, whereas West Coast are probably a lot closer to their peak at the moment, I reckon. Um, that can turn around, but it's not to say that West Coast won't top up with two or three more talented players and they'll be around the mark for the next few years. So, that, I mean, they're well ahead of Brio at the moment, but that's not to say in three years' time it'll be the same. So, certainly, I mean, you look at, as you said, 13, Brio played in the grand final, five years later, they're, they're going backwards. 
three years ago, West Coast played in the grand final. They've probably got a better team now, even with a couple of injuries to senior blokes. Their team is probably better than what it was two, uh, three years ago. Well, now, now that the movements are so uh, prolific between clubs, players uh, chopping and changing, and now we've got so many players exiting the Swans and, and other clubs. Now, to have